What's up guys, Miss Pess here, back with another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes commentary video, and today we have another event. The uh, developers have blessed us with a plethora of events for this month, and uh, this time it is the Places of Power Assault Battles. Now, this one is a new one, uh, kind of like the last one that we saw that I was nowhere anywhere close to being able to defeat that one. Uh, that one was the one where you needed resistance and Ewoks, and uh, I hate Ewoks. I refuse to gear any of them past 8 and level any of them past 80. So uh, my resistance kind of had to try and carry the load on that one, and I was unsuccessful. So, uh, obviously didn't put out a video on that one because, uh, no point in showing you guys a bunch of epic failures, so, uh, this time, though, I was able to clear the whole thing. Surprise! Spoiler alert! Yeah. Um, but, then again, we have been having a lot of fun with Sith. I like Sith, so my Sith are, uh, fairly well geared. I'm actually kind of working on Darth Maul, who really actually didn't do much of anything for me on this event, so without any further ado, let's jump right in here. I went ahead and did the first two tiers of this uh, event in super speed, so you guys get to kind of fly through that part, but uh, I did beat the whole uh, event with Zader, Emperor Palpatine, Count Dooku, Darth Sidious, and Captain Phasma. Uh, all of them gear 10+. plus. The unique ability for this event is called Dark Gambit. It sacrifices 30% of the activating unit's health to gain bonus offense, speed, and health steal for two turns, and also gain defense down for two turns. Uh, there is a unique ability for each of these uh, events, and I very rarely use any of them. I think the only one I ever actually used more than once just to kind of see what the hell it did was the ability for the Empire uh, Assault Battle, where you have to uh, beat that one with Rebels and Clones. Uh, that one actually was useful because it gave you health regen, defense up, and counterattack for two turns, which was actually pretty nifty because the health gain on that was really one of the best ways to actually regain health in that event. So I used that one a few times, but this one, honestly, I didn't even try it once because, well, I mean, you can see I didn't really have any need for it. And sacrificing health to gain health steal really... I mean, I could have maybe used it on Palpatine later in the event where, I mean, you can see that I use his uh, second special ability where he just health steals everybody else's health to heal himself up and then gives everybody offense up because, I mean, why wouldn't I just give everybody offense up, right? Uh, at any rate, uh, didn't really need it that much, so I, I don't know if maybe it would work out for you guys, but uh, that's what it does. Uh, so, the last battle on all of these tiers is obviously the most difficult because Yoda. And I swear to God they made Yoda have like a 500 speed or something ridiculous because it seemed like he was going after every single one of my characters regardless of how much turn meter, like, it was... <laughs> It was insane, but uh, the rewards on this first tier were actually pretty stinking good. 1.4 million shipbuilding mats. That's insane, guys. That was. <laughs> I saw that, and uh, I guess I just didn't realize how many shipbuilding mats they were gonna be giving us for this event because. Uh, yeah, you'll see at the end of this video, I just kind of went buck crazy with <laughs> all of my ships. Not to mention the fact that I got the last few blueprints I needed for my Ahsoka Tano's Jedi Starfighter to get that up to 7 stars. So, um, I now have two 7 star ships. I have stopped farming ships from fleet shipments in case you haven't watched any of my other videos. I've stopped farming ships from fleet shipments and honestly since I got Rex and Sunfac to 7 stars I've actually stopped farming characters from fleet shipments as well. Uh, as awesome as Cody and Echo are, especially in phase 4 of the heroic tank raid, um, 
I am putting those characters on hold. I'm really only farming them from uh, gold shipments, and that's really only if I have more than like 2,000 guild currency or, or more, because I'm primarily farming Maul, Darth Maul. So I'm not even farming Darth Maul from fleet shipments. What I am farming from fleet shipments is Zeta ability mats. And the reason there is the actual drop rate of Zeta ability mats from the Zeta ability challenge is dismal, guys. I mean, you've got a chance of getting four total Zeta ability mats every... There you go. So, um, I used Emperor Palpatine's uh, last special ability to heal himself, so... I never used the special ability unique to this event, so... any rate, um... Yeah, the drop rate of Zeta ability mats is is pathetic. It, it It's so bad. You're lucky to get one Zeta. You're really lucky if you get two Zetas, and if you get more than two, go buy a freaking lottery ticket each day that those events uh, show up. <laughs> and re redirecting back to the actual event here, the rewards on the second tier, wow, <laughs> even better than the first, right? Uh, <laughs> insane. Uh, so props to the devs for you know at least the first go around, giving us really, really, really good rewards for the first time accomplishing these uh, each of these tiers. So let's talk some actual strategy here. Obviously, you've got your generic Jedi. You've got the Jedi Consular, the Jedi Knight Guardian. You've got the Jedi Sentinels, uh, the Temple Temple Guards. So there's nothing really surprising about the makeup of any of these squads that you run into. One thing that I did notice is that Ayala Secura did not counterattack, nor did Jedi Knight Anakin gain the bonus turn meter whenever another ally of his, or rather squad mate, uh, on the same enemy squad dropped below 50% or was killed. So you don't have to worry about Jedi Knight Anakin gaining the bonus turn meter or the uh, bonus attack damage or any of those effects. So if you recall from the Sith Assassin event, the Jedi Sentinel goes into stealth anytime they take damage. I'm assuming it's a he, you don't know, can't tell. Um, otherwise, you don't really have to worry about them too much. They do an AoE, so if you're running Dooku, as long as they're not stealth already, he's just going to kill them. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it seemed like anyway. Uh, this fourth battle, if you don't get into it with your cooldowns available, you may have a little bit more trouble. If you don't have Darth Vader uh, leader ability Zeta, I would definitely recommend going in with either a Count Dooku lead or an Emperor Palpatine lead because that extra potency is going to definitely be important when you are running across trying to get your stuns, trying to get your ability blocks, trying to get your shocks, all of that. You're going to want the extra potency from Emperor Palpatine's leader ability. Otherwise, if you don't have Palpatine, uh, well, hopefully you've got Darth Maul, because I've heard Darth Maul can pretty much solo this whole event. <laughs> uh, otherwise, um, yeah, Count Dooku is probably your next best bet. Uh, otherwise, I mean, you could try a Phasma lead. I didn't try Phasma, obviously, because I didn't really need to. I beat this all in the first go, so I would probably give Phasma a shot, too, because, you know, I mean, who doesn't like extra bonus attacks, right? So... So basically, in the fourth battle, which is the soft boss battle, you generally want to try and take out Jedi Knight Anakin first, keep Rex either ability blocked or stunned so that he's not clearing your negative status effects, and then take out Ahsoka Tano next. She hits pretty hard. Then I took out Rex, and then Fives, and I don't even remember who the other Jedi there was. So just take out those guys in that order, and you should have no problems with the fourth battle. In the seventh battle, I always go after Beresafi when I see her, because I don't like Beresafi. She likes to clear my negative status effects, and when you're fighting Jedi with Sith, you definitely want those negative status effects hanging out. Uh, the negative status effects there you see that look kind of like a buff immunity are actually a morale uh, indicator. So right there you see the kind of Jedi symbol insignia above all these characters. That means that they have boosted morale. Once you kill the named Jedi on each of these tiers, your remaining 
enemies will lose their morale. Now, what that indicator means is that they have minus 25% stats or plus 75% stats. So that's a pretty significant boost. Um, this last battle, I swear, this is what I was talking about earlier in the video where Yoda just, he would just keep going. I mean, I, I mean, look at this. Friggin' what the heck is going on right now? I mean, I understand that he gets a massive amount of turn meter from you know when he resists a negative status effect but look at his turn meter gain even if i'm not even hitting him i mean what the heck is going on he just kept going over and over and over again not to mention the fact that for the whole like first i don't even know how much of this engagement they all had tenacity up and i couldn't land a negative status effect to save my life but i squeaked through without Darth Maul, mind you, to score the victory on this last tier. Uh, basically, if you can, uh, try and shock General Kenobi first, and then kill Yoda while keeping Kenobi shocked. If you are unable, as I was, to get a move in edgewise before Yoda gives everybody tenacity up, try and take out uh, General Kenobi, obviously, because he's going to take the taunt, uh, because critting is inevitable. So Kenobi is going to taunt. You're going to have to kill Kenobi, who thankfully does not take 50 bajillion turns. And then you're just going to have to whittle down Yoda. He's going to do that basic attack, scoring uh, foresight all the dang time, and that's going to be annoying in itself. Uh, but just take him down, and then the rest of the dominoes will fall after that. So, the rewards for completing the event, again, I don't really know if they'll be worth the crystals. If you're swimming in crystals and really short on those characters, maybe go for it. But I didn't really need it. Uh, like I said, the shipbuilding mats were the huge, huge, huge bonus for this event. I was not expecting shipbuilding mats for this event, so... They were a very pleasant surprise, and I am very happy that they included that many shipment building mats because, as you can tell, I was very happy to go in, score my 7-star Ahsoka Thanos Jedi Starfighter, and then proceed to level up a few of my ships to 85 because they'd been sitting at 80, uh, Biggs was at 83, I think, uh, for quite some time. I've just kind of been content to leave my ships sitting at 80. Uh, and so putting up to 85 was really fun. It was it was a nice, pleasant bonus to this. And uh, I think Big's ship is the next ship I'm going to try and get all the shards for. I'm kind of, like I said, I'm only buying ship shards from Galactic War right now. So it kind of limits the number of ships that I can actually buy. Uh, I'm sorry, blueprints. The number of ships that I can buy blueprints for. Because, you know, Zetas are uh, pretty important. I... Uh, it took me from December 29th when I unlocked the Zeta Ability Challenge to February 6th before I got my first Zeta Ability, which meant my 20th Zeta, and I actually had to buy three or four of those Zetas from the actual fleet shipments. That's how bad the drop rate was. Almost six weeks, and I only got 15, 16 Zeta Ability Mats from the challenge. Since dedicating my fleet tokens to Zeta Ability Mats, I have been able since uh, February 6th, starting from zero Zeta ability mats, already I am one shy of my next Zeta ability. So I'm pretty proud of, of being able to stay dedicated to that. The conversion gear on all my excess shards and ship blueprints was awesome. A nice little 1400 shard shop currency there so that was a really nice little added bonus on top of all of the other cool stuff we got from this event so uh well de definitely wasn't going to complain about any of that and uh, i have like 550 or 600 thousand ally points so maybe i'll burn through those in the next couple days and i don't know what i'm gonna do with that but at any rate guys uh if you got any questions about the event want some want to talk strategy Definitely check me out on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server. We can definitely talk a little bit more about the event. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, favorite, subscribe, and I will catch you all later.